We have a developing story from Washington. The Capitol and White House are on lockdown after a small helicopter landed on the north lawn of the Capitol on Capitol Hill. That area is a no-fly zone, but for anyone, for anyone who isn't a government aircraft, now law enforcement is on the scene. Thanks for joining us. I'm Vladimir Dutier. Police quickly detained the pilot and are searching the aircraft. We're going to bring in our producer, Alisa Amling, who is on the phone at the scene. Do we have Alisa? Hey, I'm here, Vlad. Hey, Elisa. So what can you tell us? Well, I was walking around the West Front right before this, what's called a gyrocopter landed, and I was asking Capitol Police, Do you, have you heard about this? Because this man, this uh, what we, for the Tampa Bay Times, uh, they say is a 61-year-old man from Ruskin, and uh, we, we saw that he was going to be landing, and I was asking Capitol Police, have you heard anything about a, a flying bicycle heading your way? And they said, no, we've heard nothing. And about five minutes after talking to a police officer that was standing about 200 yards from where the, the machine eventually landed, um, the, the man landed in what does indeed look like a flying tricycle. And uh, police quickly responded. And right now the man is detained and the, the gyrocopter sitting in the west front lawn. And it looks like a, um, a robot of some sort is investigating it to confirm there is no you know, more dangerous substances. On aboard. So, Alicia, explain this to me. This is a guy, he was seated in that contraption? Yes. He is a one person flying object. Um, I, not an engineer or a scientist, and know very little about gyrocopters, but I did just talk to an engineer who told me that it also looked to him like a, like a flying tricycle with a helix on top that successfully powered a man at least as, as far, at least across the Potomac, I believe, from the live stream that we watched a little bit of earlier and all the way to the west front of the lawn. It was relatively quiet. I didn't actually hear it until until I looked up and thought it sounded a bit like a lawnmower to me. And <laughs> oh, wow. then it, it, thud, it landed on the ground and thudded a couple times, and it landed just like you would think a flying tricycle land. So then, okay, so this guy then lands on the lawn. What happens next? Do you see police, Capitol Police, scrambling? I mean, how soon after he landed, was there some kind of reaction from law enforcement? Um, almost immediately, you saw law enforcement running up. I did not see very many weapons drawn. Other witnesses said they did. Um, I was focused on, on the man in the plane. Um, and and that would be typical, to to approach the suspect as if, as if you had no idea what he had on him or what, what was going to happen next. Um, the man was very cooperative. He eventually they asked him to put his hands over his head. He did. He stood up, got out of the plane, and went with a large huddle of law enforcement um, at, as the police were clearing the scene. Um, and he, he appeared to be very cooperative. He's currently with the Capitol Police. Um, and I guess, I guess more as we know it. But Yeah, I mean, we're looking at some pictures now taken, I guess, right after he had landed on, on the lawn. Alicia, we've always, I've always thought that in and around the Capitol, in and around the White House, there are much more stringent sort of anti-aircraft weapons available. I, I mean, this is, it seems like every other week now we're reporting on something like this landing on some, some lawn in D.C. And I think that is why Capitol Hill is trying to figure out this problem of, you know, we always thought the problem, big problem was unmanned aircraft vehicles. Right. I don't think when, um, when lawmakers have been talking about drone regulations, as they have been a lot the past couple months, I don't think they thought, what about flying tricycle regulations? Um, I was also surprised, <laughs> as were the Capitol Police, it appears, they were surprised that this, could have got, this man could have gotten so far without any, you know, anything, anyone being alerted that there was this vehicle in the uh, restricted airspace. I just just guessing here, maybe technically speaking, it wasn't high enough to trigger some of the mm, hey, hey, there's point. something flying alerts. Maybe maybe it was small enough. Um, just standing and looking at it, there were a lot of tourists who saw this thing flying through the air. So it is a bit strange to me. Um, or perhaps they had they had seen that this is from all intents and purposes for the Tampa Tampa, Tampa Bay Times article. This man didn't look to be more dangerous than, than what he was, and it was a 61-year-old man um, to, uh, purportedly flying through the air. So, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know what kind of, what kind of uh, consideration went into the equation of not, not addressing this more aggressively in the air, and, uh, if any uh, at all. And, Alicia, you may, and I'm not sure if you know this, but w so is, what is this man going to be charged with? Is this something that carries some kind of a... A penalty. Uh, I'm sure there's got to be something, uh, some law that he broke. 
That is a great question, Vlad, and I don't have the answer for you. I do know that it is illegal to put a sled on the west front of the Capitol lawn. Well, they, they so I imagine a, a flying vehicle would be very illegal. I don't know what kind of penalties would be, uh, but it, it carries. Yeah, he, he, so our producers sent us something from democracyclub.org, which apparently, allegedly, is from this gentleman, um, and it's called Live Flight. Apparently, he, he live brought, did he, I don't know if he used Meerkat or Periscope, but he was able to live stream this event. Did you hear anything about that? Uh, well, so we actually had gotten a little tip from a very uh, good producer on the desk uh, right before this happened because he had seen this, a similar thing, and we watched the live stream as he crossed the Potomac. Wow. And then the live stream seemed to go down. I think I, I imagine a lot of reporters were trying to watch it right then. Um, from, from that same article, it looks like he had used a GoPro for an earlier test case. I don't know if that's what he was using today, um, but... It, he certainly didn't appear to be holding up a phone, which I think you need for Meerkat and Periscope, right? Well, yeah, you know, if, uh, it's, if it's Meerkat or Periscope, for sure. But if he's using a GoPro, he could just attach that. But I'm not, how would he, I'm trying to figure out the technology, how, how he would, would actually, stream. yeah, to stream it. So there's, I, a, we're seeing uh, a back view there, Alicia, of the, of the, uh, the, uh, of the vehicle or whatever, the gyrocopter. Um, and you can clearly see that a man can sit in something like that. It's got a little, it's got a little tail wing. Uh, Remarkable. It, it is remarkable. It doesn't look very comfortable, but I, I, I know that I could fit in it. Um, yeah. And I think actually my cameraman could actually fit in it. He might be a little grumpier about it. <laughs> but we are walking over to a press conference, and I perhaps we'll learn some more details from that. All right. Um, we're we're going to let you go then. Uh, and if you learn any new details, we'll come back to you.